catching queen ants with a black light is something I've been testing out this summer and have been actively updating on my Instagram. Winged ants such as queens and drones fly out to mate during this season and is known as a nuptial flight. Usually a day after a rain when it's more humid is a good time to find queen ants. But because of what the world is going through right now, it's safer to stay at home and let these queens come to you. So I'm using a black light to show you how you can catch your own queen ant in the comfort of your own backyard or front yard. Except that won't really matter because if you want to buy queen ants, ant nests, and accessories, the Ant Keeping Depot is your go-to store for all of your ant keeping needs. And today's sponsor. Use the discount code ENDER5 for 5% off on your first purchase. It can be only used once, so use it wisely. But anyways, this is my daily routine with setting up my black light. The main things I use for the setup is a black light, a blanket, and a table. If you want to try this out for yourself, all you really need is a light and an open space. By the way, you can get a black light for around $20 on eBay or Amazon like I did. Starting right when the sun goes down, I move my table onto the grass and as far away from my house as possible. Next is placing the blanket so that we have an easier time seeing what's on the table at night. Once that's done, it's already looking like a good place for a picnic. Or should I say, a picnic for bugs, as I placed on the most important piece, the black light. If your cord for your black light isn't long enough, you should get an extension cord like this one right here. The prices range from $20 to $50, with a range of lengths such as 15 feet cords or even 100 feet cords. Literally moments after turning on the light, I spotted this small orange queen, and she was already removing her wings. I'm pretty sure this is a thief ant queen, and they get their name from stealing food from nearby colonies. I didn't have any test tubes with me, so I had a holder in my hands until I got one. And when I came back, I found a few more of these queens, but they still had their wings. That didn't stop me from catching them though. No, this was in a span of about 10 to 20 minutes since the sunset showing just how quickly nuptial flights can be. Let's check back an hour later and see if I can find any other queens. While we wait, I should show you guys how my colonies are doing. What's this? A surprise self-promotion of Ender Ant's new Discord? I just have to join! Where's the... link? Oh. Well, what are you waiting for, guys? Join my new server! By now, it was pitch black outside, and a little bit cold. Only a moth and this weird-looking dragonfly was here, much less than what I usually find. But I'm glad I was able to find these queens this night. And to sum it up, I found three thief ant queens and one cone ant queen I found at a park. I moved that queen into a natural setup in my previous video that you can check out at the top. Like all cone ants I catch, she was very active and tugging constantly at the cotton. These thief ant queens though were the complete opposite, with one trying to take off its wings. Overall, a very successful night and the most queens I've caught with a black light so far. I continued the same process for the rest of the nights, moving the table, placing the blanket, and setting down the black light. The good thing about black lighting is that you can find ants that don't usually fly in the daytime. And the best part, if you don't attract any queen ants, you will most likely attract some kind of bug to feed your other colonies.
As the sun went down, I found some drones and the first deal lay on the table. She must have taken off her wings when she landed. But again, I didn't have any test tubes with me. Only 10 minutes had passed when I came back to another thief ant queen. And then another 10 minutes pass and I find a new species, which I think were Nylanderia, also known as raspberry crazy ants. I probably checked the black light 5 times every 10 minutes so I wouldn't miss anything. During those checks, I found some June beetles and more drones. One of these drones looked different from the rest, so I wonder what species it could have been. The smaller ones I think were Nylanderia drones, so I put them with the queens hoping that they would mate. And I did the same with the thief ant queen I caught. But sadly, all these queens died a day later. Alright guys, let's go for a vlog style type of moving because I've literally been showing the same exact thing and I think it's getting pretty boring. Again, we're moving the table, placing the blanket, and getting the cord this time and dragging it over. Then setting down the black light. This takes about 5 minutes tops to finish, so not a lot of time. Let's do a time skip of about an hour so I can turn on the black light when it's dark out. Straight away I saw a June beetle and I remember one time me and my friends cut these beetle up and they smelled really bad. But anyways, there was also a drone but no queens in sight. It was windy the rest of that week so I didn't bother setting up my black light. Usually when it's windy, queen ants don't fly and bugs are scarce. But still, test out all the weather conditions if you're trying this out for yourself because you never know what you'll find. I sometimes find dead bugs in the blanket from the night before and put these in test tubes to feed my ants later. That night, the blanket was moved from the wind, so I wasn't really expecting anything. But there were actually some moths here and there. To keep them contained, I place a test tube over them and this is what it looks like. Then they go in the freezer for 5 minutes and are given to my colonies afterwards. The wind had picked up on this day, so much that it blew the blanket right off the table. Man, I don't even know if this is gonna stay up. Okay. Yo, I just realized that I can get some of these rocks and let's place it on the edge. So using my big brain of mine, I found a way to keep the blanket on the table. And I also decided to use my small black light today. I never really used it, so this was a good time to test it out. So I then put it on the other side of my backyard, on the concrete. This one looks so lonely right now, it's just by itself. Um, it's still pretty early too, so I guess we're just gonna have to wait until the night arrives. In the meantime guys, let's go ahead and feed some of my colonies. Uh, I don't think I really showed you guys my desk that often, but here's some moths that I caught last night. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Here's my um, natural setups, by the way. They're just right here. Now I'm not entirely sure if they'll eat these because these were in the freezer for like a whole week. I forgot about them. But anyways, let's go ahead and choose which colony to feed. So guys, which colony should I feed? Oh, did you say my Chromatogaster CF Coractata colony right here? All right guys, so here they are. Uh, the slowest growing colony so far that only has like around 40 workers right now. Let's go ahead and feed them this moth. You know, tell me in the comments if you enjoyed this kind of video. Um, I hope my audio is good because I'm not using a mic on here. This is sort of like live, I guess. But yeah, let's go ahead and dump it in. I usually just put their food like right in front of them, not only to get some good macro, but also so that they have an easier time finding it. So some of you guys wonder if I close my lid all the way, but I don't. I just leave it like, just barely closed just for some a little bit of air it looks like they found it pretty easily I'm feeding them all of the all of the moths that I found from the black light so I'm really glad that they're starting to grow again 
But yeah, they're completely swarming this thing. I'm gonna put this down and feed my other colony. Uh, which colony should I feed next, guys? Tell me, or say it out loud, and we'll see which vote has the most. Feed your bright yellow carpenter ants. Oh, did you guys say my Campanatus CF Frogillus colony? Okay, so I fed these guys like yesterday. I just realized, so I'm not gonna be feeding them. I lied. Let's go ahead and feed a different colony. Oh, did you guys say my other Campanatus CF Frogillus colony? If you didn't know, sadly, my Veramusser colony died. The queen just died randomly. I put it on my story once, but I never really talked about it in a video. So yeah, I moved this colony in here instead. And they have their first major, like right here, which is pretty cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and give them this weird bug that I found with my black light and see how they react. You see, the one thing I don't like about this colony is that they're always at the top. Like, they're the one colony that doesn't seem to chill out. Okay, let's drop that in. Okay, it looks like not a lot is going on. Uh, I don't think they're gonna eat it. You know, I've never actually seen the major attack like anything either. It just like stays inside the test tube. But yeah, let's go ahead and put them back over here. In here is my other chromatogaster colony. Over here is some Brachimer mix colonies. So yeah, that was a little quick feeding that I just wanted to do. Here's my desk. Some script work, to-do list stuff. All these other test tubes that had moths that I caught. Oh, this thing right here. This thing had a lot of Hawaiian punch and I've been like feeding my colonies with it. This entire side will have a bunch of these containers one day. Bet on it guys, bet on it. I should also show you guys my other colonies. There isn't a lot of light over here, but here's my other colonies just in test tubes. Like over here is one of my oldest colonies actually, my Bratch and Mermix colony that had three queens still in there. Uh, a Chromatogaster queen, a Campanatus, a late that I've caught last year that's still alive, that hasn't made it. All the other Bratch and Mermix colonies. I have to update this still. Some Solenopsis queens. Some more Solenopsis queens, and another unidentified queen that I'm not sure what it is. Anyways, let's go ahead and check out the black lights. All right, guys, we're back out here. I just realized I don't have any test tubes. The wind has died down, that's for sure. And there's this thing. Oh, I gotta turn on my other. Oh, oh, never mind. I gotta turn on my other black light. It's getting pretty loud over here. I forgot to turn this thing on. <laughs> okay, where's the on button? There we go. Look at that guys, our small black light is now in business. But yeah, it doesn't look like there's a lot of stuff out here. Guess we're gonna have to check back in another 20 minutes, I guess. You know, I realized I have to update you guys on so much, like all of my colonies pretty much. I did a poll on Instagram or what video ideas I should do. And a lot of you guys have said that you want to see like a room tour. And that's pretty understandable because I have a ton of colonies and a lot has happened. But don't worry, I have a lot planned, and you guys are going to enjoy it. Like seriously, now that I think about it, I have like a ton of stuff. I still have like a lot of nests that are like empty. And that's because they're all in like these cubes and tube setups. Like, do you see how many setups I have? Like I still have these fortresses that I got like two years ago, and they're still empty. Even this nest from Ant Shack, like it's still empty. <laughs> it's still empty, guys. Even this fire brick nest that I made such a long time, oh geez. Such a long th whoa, what is going on right here? <laughs> Such a long time ago. It's still empty. Man, it's pretty dark out here. Oh, what is that? Looks like a beetle, I think. I need my flashlight, one second. Do you hear that? I think there's some moth stuck in there. You guys see anything? Yeah, not a lot is out right now. There's some like, brash mermix, I think. That's pretty cool. Oh, and there's a spider. Look at that, guys. There's a spider. Is there anything, actually? No, I don't think so. I don't know if these are needed. Oh, my. Bro, that scared me so much. I'm gonna be right back and catch these guys. Yo, I really have to forget about forgetting to bring test tubes. Let's do a quick check over here. I don't really see anything. Oh, there's the beetle again. I checked one more time at the mini blacklight to some tiny moths before turning it off. The only difference with the main blacklight was that there were larger moths attracted. But overall, there wasn't any queens on the table. 
blacklighting not only lets you find lots of moths and other insects that come out at night, but can also attract different kinds of green ants found in your own backyard. In this video, I covered only 5 days of using my blacklight, but before then, I started in the middle of April and I've done this 14 times so far. If you want to see what I caught during those nights, I posted highlights on my Instagram. I'm also happy to announce that I've made my first ever Discord server, where you can show off your own colonies, talk about ants, and also promote your ant keeping related videos. I feel like we need more of this in the community, so if you want to promote your content, you can do so with fellow ant keepers in this new server. As an added plus, I'll be watching every single one, or at least try to, and comment on it if I haven't seen it already. But remember, it has to be ant keeping related. A link to join will be in the description and comment section. With all that being said, my name is Enderance, another fellow ant YouTuber, and I'll see you soon, friends.